Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Took a few days off, my anniversary, and uh, I went to the store with my daughter, so got a few minutes to make a video. Um, we're still here, and we're still watching. It's gotten quiet over the past few days. Not a lot of stuff's going on, which usually means something's about ready to pop off in the world. Um, I got an email. Um, the Cataclysm Tony Early, uh, his YouTube, uh, he made a whole video on this email. Uh, a lot of us got this email. Um, now, the name's non-binary, so you're going to have to forgive me. Uh, I don't know uh, if it's male or female, but let me get into that email real quick here. So, Jackie Brown sent a lot of the watchmen an email and here's everybody that she sent this to and everybody highlighted she had the email address for and everybody that is not highlighted she did not have the email address for and Ecro Symphony I do have the email address for she emails me quite often with some really high tech um, engineering numbers that she puts together that goes way over my head but I do love it when she sends me stuff because uh kind of humbles me <laughs> and makes me realize that uh, there's some really smart people out there in the world. I think that Tony Early did a very good job explaining um, to, what's the name again, my bad, Jackie, that um, the many questions that Jackie had and I think he did a very good job in his video. I would suggest or um, yeah, suggest to go over and watch Tony Early's video uh, as he responds to this email. I want to do a little bit of responding to the email myself. And the first question is, why do so many watchers all keep coming up with different dates? And I want to remind you that these are high watch days. No one that or they shouldn't, most will not say this is going to happen on this day. There have been a few to their chagrin. Obviously, it passed. Um, but these dates are high watch in that they are symmetrical and they look like something that, you know, could happen. God is symmetric. He is math. Um, when we get to heaven, First of all, the rapture date is set in stone. It was from before the foundations of the world. That date has been done. God has been pointing us to that date all along. As this unfolds with wonderful people like Dr. Barry and End Times Dreams and Visions and, well, let's just go up and look at the list. Um... Tony Early, Ecro Symphony, all of these people that have really, oh, look at there, Repo Man 64, Ricardo Garcia, wow, I mean, they have really put together Steve Fletcher, The Return of the King, um, Watchmen for that great day, Watchmen River, um, We Are the Overcomers, they have done an incredible job of trying to figure this out. Why don't we know yet? And that's what I want to touch on. Uh, Tony Early, again, goes into a lot of good stuff on that. This is why. Every single stone that we cross to get across this raging river that we can't see the other side to because there's so much fog, every single stone that we jump across, at least we're making that leap of faith to the next stone. Each stone that we come to, we think perhaps could be a high watch date, but it leads to another stone. Why do we all, and, and, and I would say that we're all close. We all come in pretty close to the date, um, but the reason we, we it appears as though that we all have slightly different dates is because there are, just on my timeline alone, um, There are five different calendars. 
Where do you start the year? For example, May 14th, 1948 happened. If you look at May 14th, 1948, it was IR5. This year, IR5 falls on March 26th. So as you can see, the calendars do not match. They actually will not match at all. So as we go through this, I like my calendar. I believe the head of the year is March the 17th <clears throat> every single year. I think the last Sabbath is March the 16th. This year, the March the 16th fell on a Thursday. So I think the Sabbath day throughout the entire year, all the way up until March 16th of next year, will be on a Thursday. That will be the Sabbath. <clears throat> the reason that happens is because the Gregorian calendar does not adhere to the day out of time, like the Enoch timeline does. So we're all looking at a different starting point. <clears throat> they have the equal lux, which is what I look at. It's the day of equal parts. It's the day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? It's the day he admitted that Lazarus had, in fact, died. This happened on March 16th. But others don't look at that event. They look at other things like the equinox, which happens four days later. They look at the first sliver of the moon after the equinox, which this year was March the 23rd. They look at the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries, which I believe this year was April the 21st. So, for example, Ricardo Garcia is looking at that as his starting point. And 14 days later, so if it was the 21st, I think that's the day. Don't hold me to that, but that's eight days past. We know that Jesus went to the cross 14 on the 14th day of the month. So that would mean that... Um, it would be April or May the 5th. And you know, there are a lot of people looking at May the 5th as being the Passover. As we continue through this, I want to tell you that you, the email that was sent to me, has their finger on the pulse of what all of us are thinking. I'm no different than anybody else. I have my timeline, but I'm super interested in Ricardo and what he says, Dr. Barry and what he says, and all these absolutely phenomenal people that are trying to figure this out. But I want you to remember, at the end of the day, God is going to fulfill Amos 3.7. There will be no secret hidden. He will reveal all of it to us. In other words, we're going to continue to jump across those stones. <clears throat> Ultimately, we will reach the other side. Before we reach the other side, God will tell us exactly when it's going to happen. Will he tell us? Now, remember, the, the bridesmaids are the saints and the Jew. When Jesus returns, he returns calling himself the Bridegroom. He would not have called himself the bridegroom if he were not already with his bride. So, but at that point, when he returns, he sounds the horn, and then he, they know there's enough time for them to know that they have to go get oil or not get oil. Those who go off to get oil did not see him return. Those who stayed with plenty of oil saw him return, and then he hung around until they came back and knocked on the door and they couldn't get in because he said, I don't know you, which no means it's an intimate word. Like the world is full of Christians, a lot of Christians, but they are not intimate. They are not searching this stuff out. And that's the point of all of this that we're doing and the hard work that we're putting in and all this trying to figure this out, it's proof. Remember, this is a court appointment. Just like Job, God already knew that Job loved him because he was faithful. God already knew that he had given him these rewards not to make him faithful, but because he was faithful. 
It's almost identical, and unless you are a true follower, I don't want to say true follower, I think unless you are intimate, you will not understand this. It will it will go right over it. Just you just can't understand it. It's the same concept, exactly the same concept as I do all kinds of works. So many of them. But none of them count for anything. I, I was already saved. That's why I'm doing these things. But there are a much larger group of people who are doing these things to get saved. When I stand in front of Jesus and he says, and the Bible doesn't say this, but if it, if it were said, and he says, why do you deserve to come in? I'm going to say, I don't. I'm only praying that I have that covering. I have that covering and you can't see me. You can't see my sins. I'm only praying that I have the covering of Jesus, that I have been covered. That they can't see me. If they could see me, I wouldn't be there. If they could see any of us, I wouldn't be there. Just like when Jacob and Esau, Jacob received the blessing. Isaac was blind. He could barely see. He could not see Jacob. All he could do was feel. And he felt this hairy arm. But it was, it was an animal skin. What does that represent? That represents Jesus. He was covered by Jesus. Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge. He gave it up. In God's eyes, when you're not saved, it is, it is as though you sold your soul for a bowl of porridge. It is the silliest. You live on this planet. I mean, God says 70, 80 years. You live here 70, 80 years. You have 70 to 80 years to recognize and accept that Jesus Christ came here. He did come here. He came here 1,993 years ago. He died on a cross. He rose on the third day. He said it is finished on the cross. When he rose, many of the saints rose with him. This is what we look for. That's it. That's all we have. We don't have anything else. Not the wonderful things I have done, and I, I can't go to heaven and start talking about me. If you go to heaven and you're talking about you, you you've misunderstood everything. It's all about Jesus and that covering. So anyway, uh, again, Dr. Uh, Doctor <laughs> Tony Early from the Cataclysm Tony Early did the best job, I think, of uh, responding to that email. And so I just wanted to give a little response myself. Let's get back into the pictures. We have so many. All right, so <clears throat> what are we doing here? What exactly are we doing with all these dates that we keep coming up with, different five different calendars? How, what, which event is it? is it? Is it going to be Passover? Is it going to be Tabernacles? Is it going to be Atonement? What, is it going to be Second Passover? Is it going to be Shavuot? When is it going to be? Which one matches perfectly? And the answer is they all kind of do. So God did this on purpose, not to make us scramble around, but to make us look forward to I promise you those 10 bridesmaids, even though they had all fallen asleep up until that point, they, you know, if they represented the bride, that's probably a bad analogy of the bride because the bride's already with Jesus. But the bride is searching and searching and searching, trying to figure out when is this going to happen. I know he's going to build a place for us, you know, and he's going to come back and get me. And you're just trying to figure that out. So why do we continue to warn? It's in the proof, just like Job. God already knew that Job loved him, and that's why God blessed him. It's the same thing. It is a warning that this event might take place on this day, or on this day, or on this day, and look at all the math that makes it look like this day, and look at this calendar and make it look at this day. It is not a confusion. It is evidence. Just like in Job. And at the end of the day, when we get to heaven going, why didn't you come on this day? And he's going to say, where were you when I built the universe? Where were you when I, what did it say? Something about hanging the belt on Orion or something. There's, I mean, where was Job? He didn't have a right to question it. All Job had to do was 
be Job, have faith. And that's exactly what we're to have. We're to have this unwavering, unshakable faith that this event is going to happen. And in a planet of 8 billion people, there are so few, and, and it's not about trying to figure it out and sitting down, oh, well, that's not fair because you have a timeline and I don't. It's about watching, and that's what we're doing. I'm presenting this for, I have four, over 14,000 subscribers now, and I do this in the anticipation that you will watch. And maybe, and I've had it happen, I've had my mind blown by some stuff that comes into the comment section or they come into our Discord and just, it blows my mind with some of the stuff that I've seen that people put together. And a lot of it, just like, Sympathy, she's an engineer. I, I, I couldn't even keep up with what she does. But my thing is, and this is my prayer a couple of years ago, was, Lord, if I don't know the first day of the year, and all of these have different days, and then, of course, what do I do but come up with a completely different first day of the year? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, but it did help because, again, we're all jumping from stone to stone to stone, going across that raging river. It's so loud you can't hear. There's so much fog you can't see, and you don't know where the other side is. But at the end of the day, you're going to hear that trumpet blast, and you're going to make that final leap onto the shore in heaven on the other side. And that's what we do. Again, 8 billion people are not watching, would laugh at this if they saw it, would, it wouldn't even, like if they turned it on for two minutes, they're going to be like, religious stuff, they're going to turn it off. So we are not here confusing each other. We're here talking about the Bible and showing you verse after verse after verse uh, to the point where it's almost Amos 3.7. It's almost at heart. You know what Amos 3.7 says. You know what John 6.44 says. You know these things. And that's the intimacy that you gain from watching, that you will not gain from going. Everybody knows John 3.16. Those are the people that go into the church each week. And they think they've washed themselves by going into church done a good thing, they go out for their meal, they go home and they continue on their week, and then they go back to church on Sunday. And I'm not like putting that down in any kind of way, but have you walked into any of these churches as of late? I have not darkened the door of a church in 20 years because it wasn't, it wasn't, I wouldn't say profitable for me. What I would say is I walked into a church, right? And I sat down and the guy said, the preacher said up front, if you're broke, it's because you don't love God and God doesn't love you. I got up and I walked out and the usher's like, where are you going? I'm like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There are plenty of completely broke people who don't even know how they're going to find their next meal tomorrow that absolutely love Jesus and are dying to see him. Can't wait to see him. And that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And I walked out. And I must have walked out of 20 or 30 churches. Same thing. If you don't tithe money, if you don't give me money this week, you're going to hell. I can't stay in that place. So I tried, and I tried, and I tried. And then I finally said, you know what? I'm coming out of the church. I'm not going back into it. Now, if you found an awesome church that doesn't do that and is... Like J.D. Farag has a church, and this is what he talks about. He talks about um, Jesus coming back. Now, that's a good church. I don't live anywhere near him, so I can't go to his church. I haven't found one around me that actually talks about the end times. So, anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long. Why do we warn and continue to do what we do in the hopes that you keep watching and you contribute and you love this moment that we have that we will not have for all eternity of wonder as we shake the present trying to figure out what's inside like a child does and they guess and they guess and they guess and they just don't know they don't know until christmas morning when they open that present and then they know what's inside the same thing we're going to jump from stone to stone from date to date and we're going to keep watching these high watch days. And, and honestly, I could say 
the next high watch day is in three days. That's fine, but it could happen in the next three seconds. It could happen at any moment. And I'm going to show you a new YouTube that came out. He literally has three videos on there. One of his videos, because it's so good, has over 100,000 views, and yet he still has 3,500 subscribers. 104,000 views with 3,500 subscribers. I do not understand that. When you see something like that, and this video, I'm going to show you the link, and I'll link it into the uh, description box at the bottom. When you see a video like this, as well put together as, as it was, and as much work as he put in, I'm low tech. This guy put a lot of work into this video. When you see something like that, please subscribe because and like the video, like the video because the algorithm is going to put it out there. If that video, if I could get that video out there into the world and the world were able to see this video after the rapture, so many people would understand exactly what's about to happen. So why do we warn people? We aren't just warning the bride. We don't even really need to warn the bride. The bride is saved. That's the end of it. We are covered by Jesus. We don't have to do anything. We are already saved. The next group is who we are worried about. They are your mothers and brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and uncles and children. They are everyone who will not listen, will not watch. They they are indifferent to it. They not they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't know if they even believe God exists. They are the ones we're fearful of that as soon as we are gone, the beast is going to step up. He's going to look like uh, he is the lamb, that he is the answer to everything, and he's going to offer a mark. And we need to worry about those people. The bride is sealed. It's done. Our names are written before the foundations of the world. It is done. Who do we worry about? We worry about those people, and that's why I make these videos, and that's why... I would love, I mean, I'll be in heaven and pray that one video makes it through and somebody says, I'm not taking the mark. I heard that already on YouTube or it was out there somewhere on the World Wide Web. And I'm, I'm not taking that mark. I know exactly what it is because it was told to me what it was. And that is what's so important. Today, the 29th, the moon appeared in. That's about, that's pretty close to about right now. Um, the moon appeared in Leo. It might be Israel time, I'm not sure. But the moon appeared in Leo, so this was a very high watch day for me. I could warn you that eating this every single day would kill you. Until the death happens, you won't believe me. You will continue to eat this type of food day in and day out until it kills you. But here's the fact. It causes death from anywhere to 22 to 91% of the people who do not eat a balanced meal and good food daily. It causes heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. I would be remiss if I were a doctor... And I didn't warn you that eating this every single day, morning, lunch, and dinner, every single day, three meals a day, eating this, that would lead to this. If your doctor told you that, you'd probably believe him. You probably would. If you smoke these cigarettes, I could warn you, the doctor could tell you that it would inevitably lead to this. You would get lung cancer if you continue to smoke cigarettes. Why would anyone warn you against cigarettes and care whether or not you got lung cancer from smoking them? Why waste time warning people who won't listen? Because sometimes people do listen. Why would we ever warn people that speeding causes this many fatalities in a year. In 2020, it caused, speeding caused uh, 11,258, I believe, uh, accidents or deaths, I'm not sure. 
uh, of the 38,000 accidents. So it accounts for a third of the accidents. Why would I warn you that this could happen to you? A police officer will tell you to slow down. He's not doing that because he cares whether or not uh, you destroyed your car. He, cares, he tells you because of all the other people you'll harm, including yourself, and that fact that he has to clean this mess up. This is why he doesn't care about the money or getting the ticket or quotas. He cares that this doesn't happen to you. That's why he pulls you over. A good police officer will pull you over for this reason right here. He doesn't want to clean this up. Why does he waste his time warning you that this could happen if you continue to speed everywhere you go with no skills? Most people that do this have zero skills. Why would I warn you that this rapture is going to take place, that it is coming soon, that I have found a timeline that I believe is correct, and on this timeline, it shows many high possible dates of the rapture. I'm not saying that if you speed, you are going to have a car accident, although it's likely that you will. I'm not saying that this date is a rapture date, but I'm telling you that it's a higher probability than other dates. That's why I'm telling you. I'm warning you because when the rapture occurs, it will be too late and you will have to go into tribulation and that's what I'm worried about. This is what you will face if you do not accept Christ into your heart and turn to him. Turn to Jesus now because it is time. It is time. It has been time. When God says a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day, how many seconds do you think that is for a week or a month? When God says I'm coming and I'm coming now, to us it might mean a week, a month. You know, I, I, I don't think this is going to go on very much longer, honestly. I think it's going to occur here pretty soon. But this is what will happen. Oh, that was a response. Somebody said, why are you setting dates? Why are you looking at dates? Stop looking at dates. Why am I warning you about a car accident and smoking cigarettes and eating fattening food? Why would I waste my time? Because the rapture is going to occur. People who don't want to hear about these dates are people that don't believe the rapture is going to occur. Remember, like I said at the beginning of the video, over here on the left, March 16th, is the day of equal parts. You can go into time and date and look at today. You can look, I think it's, you can go as far back as uh, 600 years. And on March 16th, it will be the day of equal parts. You can go as far forward in time and date and you'll see that March 16th is the day of equal parts. It is the day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. It is the day where Jesus admits that Lazarus, in fact, had died. And if you do the math from Lazarus all the way through to where he has a meal with Mary and Martha, it lands perfectly, perfectly, from Martha being dirty for touching a dead body, touching Lazarus, to her three-day ceremony that she has to perform, to her uh, four more days to be clean after seven days, to her meal with Lazarus on the eighth day, it's perfect. Nissan 8. Nissan 1 is March 17th. I just found this. I thought it was so cool. Where are we at right now? Look down there at the bottom in blue. How do we count these days? You just notice the, the number circled up there. That means that it's 59 days. IR 29. If you come over here, look down here on the left-hand side in yellow for Moses. Nissan has 30 days. Ayar has 30 days, and Savan has 31 days. If you count to Ayar 14, you will come to, did I do that wrong? Oh, Ayar 14, yeah. Okay, so I, I, my math went wrong in my head for a second. So Nissan has 30 days. There are 14 days used up in Ayar. Down here in blue, it's 44 days from March 17th to April 29th. 
44 days exactly. IR 14 is 44 days in because it's 30 days of all the month of Nissan and 14 days of IR. Every third month at the gate, this day counts as a day. There are 360 days with four gates. These are called gates. Savan has a gate. Elul has a gate. Kislev has a gate. And Adar has a gate. They are all separated. There's four gates. So given the year, 364 days. And if you look at our planet, it actually takes exactly 364 days for it to come back to the same exact point it was in the sky from the year previous. The reason there are 365 and a quarter days is because they are attempting to turn the Earth back. They're allowing, not attempting, they're allowing the Earth to turn back to the same position that it's facing each year. If you think about the, the planet spinning and going around the sun, it would not spin and land in the same exact position. So they allow the day and a quarter to come, making it 365 and a quarter days each year. So what did I find? Just as in the days of Noah, this timeline, and only on this timeline, does the flood happen on October the 31st. Everyone will admit that they believe the flood happened on October the 31st, but this math that you have to do to get to each date Savon 15 is, is two months, which is 60 days, plus the 15 days of Savon over here. That's 75. It's simple. Count from May 17th plus 75 days. You will land on May 30th every single time. So what did I do? When God said in Exodus 12 to turn the time back, this now is ahead of your year. He did that on September the 17th, he turned time back 182 days exactly, and it landed on March the 17th. Did I do that right? Yes, yeah, September 15th, March the 17th. I did this, just realized this, and I did not know this a couple days ago. Noah's Ark happens when you do the math on this timeline and you go down and you add all of the months up like you're supposed to, Eshbon 17 would actually be the 229th day of the year, starting the year on March the 17th. Add 229 days to March the 17th and you will land on Halloween night, October the 31st. If you do what God said to do in Exodus 12 and go back 182 days, the most incredible thing happens. Noah's Ark lands on Ayar 17, 182 days earlier, which is May 2nd. This is spectacular because, and, and I've asked myself a million times, okay, it's the mirror. You have Jesus on the cross, and three days later, he defeats death. But over here, you have second Passover, but no event Three days later, I could not find an event for three days after the Passover. But then I did that 182 days from Noah's flood, and I went backwards, and it lands on May the 2nd. Three days after the second Passover. We have an event now, three days after the Passover. Just like the first Passover, we now have an event three days after the second Passover. So, May 2nd. Today was a very high watch day for me. It is actually all of this week. Now remember, Jesus went to the tomb for 72 hours. I've, I've uh, shared this in my community page. Uh, somebody talked about that. It was, it was actually a really good video. 72 hours, three days and three nights. He, when um, Jonah went into the belly of the whale, he was in the belly of the whale for a full three days and three nights. They cast him overboard, and I would say that it's since it's supposed to mirror Jesus on the cross, they cast him overboard at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He treaded water or was swallowed by the fish, just like Jesus was put into the tomb. 
And he did this. He stayed inside the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, just like Jesus stayed in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. And he rose before sunrise, which is why it appears to be four days, but it's three days because he died before sunset, but that day doesn't count. At three o'clock in the afternoon till sunset at six or seven, it doesn't count. It begins counting at sunfall, at uh, when, when uh, the sun falls. And then he rises on the second, but it becomes the third. And that doesn't count either because he rises before the sun rises. So, all right. Now, again, we have an event for May 2nd. It is the 47th day of the year. And if you count backwards from October the 31st, 182 days, you'll land there. Again, three days. How did that happen? It happened because numbers are perfect in every way. Now, the next thing I want you to notice here is IR 29, May 14th. I'm going to show you something in a second. But May 14th is May 14th is May 14th. That's the day that Israel became a nation on May 14th, 1948. But in May 14th, 1948, it was a year five. But because they jumble the calendars every month, every, every year with the new moon, it could move as much as 29 days or 30 days out of place, 10 days every year out of place. So every 19 years, it's accurate. This is IR 29. IR 29 is May 14th. It always has been May 14th. This is the date that Israel became a nation. They became a nation on IR 29. IR 5, if you do the math, it's 30 days for Nissan and 5 days right there for IR, it's April the 20th, okay? IR 17th is May the 2nd, that is 30 days for Nissan and 17 days for IR, come over here. May 14th is May 14th, and I'm going to show you why May 14th never changes and it doesn't but here, the moon is in the sky as a warning. The sun, moon, and stars <clears throat> are there as a warning. I don't believe that they are there as a timepiece. The timepiece is the 12 constellations that the sun appears in front of. And that's what gives us our story that we see in heaven. And it moves because of the procession of the sun. It moves every 2,100 and something. I forget exactly, but... Over around 2,000 years, it moves to a new constellation, and it tells the story in heaven from creation to the flood to Jesus being here. Now it's in the fish to us being raptured, and next it will be in uh, Aquarius. That's what's coming next, and that's the beautiful story we see in the constellations. Now down here at the bottom... I don't think we're going to go out this far, but maybe we will. If you count from the head of the year, 30 days for Nissan, 30 days for AR, and you come to Savan 3, it will be 63 days into the year from March 17th. Jesus ascended on May 18th. That is exactly 63 days. He ascends. Three days later is Shavuot. Not 10 days. Remember, Jesus spent seven days in heaven. He came back to find Thomas and the other apostles behind a locked door, fearful for their lives because this was a very tumultuous time after Jesus had resurrected. And, um, but Jesus had not been walking with them. Had he been walking with them, they wouldn't have been in that upper room with the door, the, the door locked. Jesus went through that locked door to find them in that upper room, scared. They did not have the Holy Spirit yet. They did not know what was going on, and they were hiding up there. From that moment forward, from Thomas in the upper room, Jesus walked with them for 40 days, like he had for the previous three years, 182 days. So, 40 days later, Jesus ascends in their sight. He does this on Nisan 3. 3-3-6-3. Three, three, 
the third month and the third day, which is the 63rd day of the year on May 18th. Three days later is Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. This is when the Holy Spirit descends. This is 6666. Sorry, 3666. Sivan is the third month. So the first two months, Nisan and Ayar makes up the 60 days. It is the sixth day of that month. When you do all of this math, you come to Sivan 6. It is the 66th day of the year, 666. Now, remember, 666 is the number of man. Man was created on the sixth day. Satan is also the number of the beast. The number of the man will uh, the beast will assume a man during the tribulation period. He will uh, assume the appearance of a man. So that's what that number is for. When the Holy Spirit came down, he came down here for man to defeat evil. So evil didn't have free reign over the planet. He did that on Sivan 6, the 66th day of the year. All right, let's keep going here. I wanted to show you that from October the 31st, and I went, let's see, did I add or did I subtract? Include I think I added, but I probably should have subtracted. Anyway, from October the 31st, it doesn't matter. It's on either side of the calendar. It's 182 days and 183 days inclusive when you're counting the final days. So this is inclusive here, May, May 1st. It's inclusive, meaning it's May 2nd, the next day. The same thing happens when you go, but not including, and you land again on May 1st. So May Day. May Day is a very high watch day for me because May 2nd is the anniversary of the flood only 182 days earlier, which May 1st could be the rapture. May 2nd could start all of the, the turmoil. May Day, when we uh, disappear. I wanted to show you Shavuot and what it was. Um, they say here that Shavuot is always on the sixth day of the month of Sivan. Sivan is the third month, the sixth day of the third month. And when you start the year on March the 17th, it is the 66th day of the year. Oh, I had it in here. I didn't realize that. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The beast will take on the appearance of a man. And his number is, man's number is, and the beast's number is, 666. On May 14th in the year 2023, if you look down here in blue, there will be 13 hours and 44 minutes of daylight. We have gone past the day of equal parts, which is March the 16th. We have gone past it. Here we are in 2023. That's how many. That's the position of the earth. It is the same time now as it is in 1948. In the upper left, you see 1948. 13 hours and 44 minutes. It is this same exact day. We can use the moon to jump days all we want. The fact is, on this day in 1948, there were 13 hours and 44 minutes of daylight, just like here. 13 hours and 44 minutes of daylight, exactly. On May 14th in the year 2023, 75 years earlier, Again, on May 14th, 1948, we have 13 hours and 44 minutes of daylight. That means that the position of the planet is exactly where it was in 1948. Even though they call it a YAR-5, it was not a YAR-5 back in 1948. It was a YAR-29. And the reason is that they were so far off back then is because they used the moon to start their year. Give them a shout out. Here's what I'm going to show you. Let's see here. This is Supernatural by Design. His channel is growing very nicely. He does a lot of amazing work. Um, 
And he really finds some interesting stuff, again, pointing to this year as being the year the rapture must occur. It must occur in 2023. Um, I'm not going to be as uh, dogmatic about it because it could occur in 2024. I don't know. But at this point, what all the watchmen are, and remember, my timeline is, uh, is a, an annual revision uh, 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 timeline that doesn't change. It's it's solid. It doesn't move. March 17th is always the head of the year. You can figure out your Sabbath by knowing where March 16th is at every single year. Next year, the Sabbath will fall actually on a Saturday for next year in 2024. So he does a lot of amazing work. I love his his teachings. Egerson, here she does. This is what she does to me. She's she literally sends me an email. She responded, by the way. Uh, I didn't take a picture of it, but she responded to that email that I talked about at the beginning of the uh, thing. She did a very good response to that, that email. And again, we're all feeling the same way. Don't think I don't feel the same way. I'm like, why didn't it happen last night? What did I get wrong? And I go back in and I start studying more. And God's like, <laughs> gotcha. You're studying. And that's what I want you to do. Hi, everyone. Here's something very interesting. Maybe you can make uh, some uh, heads or tails of this from an engineering perspective. Exactly. 1,335 days plus two years, Shemitah and Jubilee, after the birth of the man-child Jupiter, when Jupiter left the womb of Virgo on September the 9th, 2017. I thought it was September 23rd. Maybe I'm wrong. At exactly 1 p.m., UTC plus three, you gotta be, what? May 6th, 2023. This is exact, oh, May 6th. Oh, she's pointing to May 6th. Oh, yeah, King Charles is doing his coronation on uh, May 6th. So I'm looking at May 2nd, but we're right in this window of everyone looking at May. I know people looking at May, I'm looking at May 2nd. People are looking at May 4th, 5th, and 6th. So here it is. You have, look at this, 93, and I've looked recently, and it's over 100,000 views with three thousand subscribers please go to this channel this guy does an amazing job and go here and uh and subscribe to his channel he's got he's at least he's got uh three over three thousand likes which means it'll it'll the algorithm will put his video out there a lot further than uh not having that many likes that's what the likes do it it, it creates an algorithm that gets it put out there so I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, I, I will put a link to his uh, YouTube in the comment section and I'll pin it so that you guys can go here. But please uh, like the video and subscribe to it. It's an hour long and it is something else. It will open your eyes. And amazingly, amazingly, uh, his date for the cross is... Three days after mine, I think he went to the cross on 3.30.30 at 3 p.m. Jesus went to the cross on March 30th in 30 A.D. at 3 p.m. And I think he rose on 4.3.30 at some point at nighttime. He could have gotten, he could have rose any, at any point after the sun went down. Uh, that night because it became a new day. He had to complete April the 2nd. April the 2nd ends at nightfall in Israel and becomes April the 3rd. So he rose technically on April the 3rd, but he completed those three days and three nights on April the 2nd. And he is looking at April the 3rd as being the Passover. So we're literally just three days off from each other. I, I, I thought the, the video was amazing. So anyway... I got through it. Yay. Haven't shaved in a couple of days. Took a couple of days off spending with my wife. It's our 16 year wedding anniversary. She put up with me for 16 years. Can you imagine that? Um, so keep watching. If you got anything, put it in the comment section. Come on into Discord. I'll put a link in the Discord. Come on in there. And if you got some amazing math, if you're really, really smart, like Ikra Symphony, keep it to yourself. No, <laughs> send it on over. I'll look at it and I'll put it in there so that others can look at it who are much more uh, numerical than I am. I am verbal, um, not as numerical. So, but 
Um, my next high watch day, not saying it's the rapture, don't send me an email, um, is May the 2nd. And yeah, I know, it's not the same as anybody else's, but that's okay because it's just another stepping stone. It might be a small stone. It might be a big stone. It might be the other side. But we're going to keep watching and keep trying to figure this out together. Um, I can promise you there are nearly 8 billion people that are not watching, that have no clue, that don't care to have a clue, that don't believe any of this stuff. So the last thing we want to do is to discourage anybody who's trying to figure this out. Anybody, and I mean anybody, who's trying to figure this out and has looks at something and sees symmetrics in it and works it out like this guy that did the 2030. He has literally gone from the cross to 2030 and back up to 2023. He is, in my mind, proven that 2023 is the year and that God is revealing to us as we go along, just like the book of Daniel says, shut these words up for the time of the end. If God says, hey, guess what? Uh, you're going to go on Shabbat on Savon 6, let's say for example, which is May 21st. can't see without my glasses. May 21st. What would you do? Because you were told to occupy until he returns. You're supposed to go to work every day. You're supposed to keep paying your bills. You're supposed to keep eating uh, or fasting, as it were. Um, keep living your life. Keep doing your thing. But this, this not knowing thing has gotten us to get out and talk about it. And when you don't know something for certain, you're kind of talking but asking questions. You're getting a response from people. Do you think it could be? Have you ever heard of this thing? You know, and I, that's how I kind of approach people is like, have you ever heard of this rapture thing that they're saying is about to happen? No, I haven't heard anything about it at all. I said, all I know is you can't take the mark. But then you approach other people and you're like, have you heard of this rapture thing? Yes, I have. And let me tell you about it. Okay, let's talk. And then we get to talking, you know, and that's the joy of this. That would end the second we found out the exact date. That would all end. Human nature, it would end. So I'm very thankful for all of these high watch dates that have been coming out. Honestly, it's been it's been about two or three years now. I've never seen anything like this. I've been trying to, I've got timelines back here from, you know, 10, 15 years ago that I put together. I used to have it hanging on the wall in my earlier videos. Um, and uh, if I knew the date 20 years ago, I, I don't I don't even know. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad we're here because this is like, this is like shaking. I mean, do you walk up and hand your kid an iPhone or do you pack it, wrap it, put it in a box and then put it into another box and then put it into another until it's a big, huge box and then laugh? With every single box a kid opens, am I ever going to get to it? And they open another box. Oh, am I ever going to get to it? What date? Come on. Opens another box. It's another date. Another box represents a date is what I'm saying. So every single box, you know, you get down to it. It's an iPhone. I'm here. I finally made it. It took me an hour to open all. You guys really worked hard hiding this thing because it was a huge present this big. And it came out to be the most amazing gift I don't know if an iPhone is the most amazing gift. Android, it's just an example that I'm using. But you see what I'm saying, and that's what this is. It's box after box. A guy is enjoying watching us open up each box until we finally get to the prize, until we finally get to see what he did for us, what he did for us. And that's what we're doing. And that's why this must occur. That's why we must watch, and that's why we must continue on, and that's why I will never say, mine's right and everybody else is wrong. If you listen to them, you, there's something wrong. No, I will never say that because God is God, and he gave us all these breadcrumbs. He didn't just give me March 17th, and I believe it firmly that that's correct. He also gave... Um, Ricardo Garcia, the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries. And uh, what was that? That just happened, I think, on the 21st, if, if, I, if I said that correctly earlier. Um, and he believes that. And I commend him. And I, and I want him to be right. Because his Passover is my second Passover. 
You see what I'm saying? So it's it's that close. It's only a few days off. So I want Dr. Barry to be correct. I want it to be the first sliver of the moon after the equinox. I will never say, I don't understand why you guys are doing that. I won't say that because God could use any of these calendars and God could use any one of these events that he's laid out. Dr. Barry did an amazing job of laying out all of these events that take place throughout the year. And he has this, it all in kind of, cartoon behind him and you can see he zooms in you can see he did, he did he did an amazing piece of work when he did that but you can see how each story relates to a rapture scenario and it's amazing what he did so watch all of the watchmen try to figure there's only one litmus test that i have when i watch somebody if they say jesus christ was created on the first day they're out Jesus Christ is God Almighty. Nothing was created that was not created by Jesus Christ. He is the Word that became flesh. Jesus Christ is, only God could come here and do what He did. Not something created. Jesus is not created. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh, came here and died for our sins, and is going to show that to us. So if you have a YouTube channel, and I don't, I would never like talk about you or, or, or put you down for it in any kind of way because again there are kernels of information you have that's important i can't subscribe to it though because in you're 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 saying jesus christ is not god i, I can't subscribe to that. that's the only thing i can't do i can't subscribe to that but everything else wrong dates um are we in the seals or not? Is this, are we going to seal six or we go before? All that stuff is not a salvational issue. But when you start calling my creator, the creator that spoke everything into existence, Jesus Christ himself, God Almighty, anything less than that, like he's a prophet or he's, he, he was created to be the savior, that's, I can't, I can't even contemplate that. So, no, I won't. I, that's the only litmus test I have is that, remember, Jesus Christ is God Almighty, God in the flesh, God the Creator, God that became the Word, God that died for your sins on a cross, God that was buried in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, God that rose from the dead on the third day and saved anyone anyone i mean anyone on planet earth with a free gift and if they would just accept that gift that's it just like the uh galilean wedding he comes around with a cup and he offers it to her he's done everything for that cup he set up the whole wedding he he got everybody there he made the cup he put the wine in the cup. He did everything, and he hands it to you. It is not a work to accept the cup and drink from it. That is not a work. You can't take what you must do. You must accept the free gift. Here's a gift. Do you accept it? Yes, I do. Here's a gift. Do you accept it? I reject it. I would never reject this, but you see what I'm saying. You have the will to reject. He will call all flesh. Many will reject. So go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know and you don't need to tell anybody and accept the Lord into your heart. I will, you will find what I just said in Matthew 6, 5 and 6. You'll read that. This is not a prideful moment. This is a humility moment. Kneel quietly in a closet by yourself and accept the Lord into your heart and explain to him just talk to him like a friend it's that simple he's your friend he's your creator he didn't create you for nothing he is your creator and he did that for you and accept him and you'll see the change and once you see that change now you have become like um, the rich man gave out his money to different people and some of them went out and made more money for him some went out and made a little bit more and one of them just buried that money and so he kicked them out took that money and handed it to the one who had made the most because we are to continue to talk about this and that's what's so convenient 
about having these timelines is it is an opportunity. Ah, did you think about that for a second? Why do we keep looking at all these high watch days? It is an awesome opportunity for us that uh, I, I sure could know a lot more about the Bible, but I know a little bit more than some. And I like to share what I know. And isn't this an amazing opportunity to tell you that the high watch day that I have next is from May 2nd to Shavuot on Sivan 6, which is May 21st. Isn't it a wonderful opportunity for me to tell you that at any point between those two points is a high watch day and that this could happen. And all of the verses that we've gone over and all of the discussions we've had about God and salvation and everything else, isn't it a wonderful opportunity to be able to do that while we discuss the next high watch day? And I think that's what this is all about. So for you, um, I'm bad with names. I admitted that in the last video. Is it Tracy? Sorry, um, I'll have to go back and look at it, but for that email, that's why. This is an intimate moment that only a select people will actually get involved with and do, and it's not about the date. It's about the unity that all of us are coming together, working together, trying to figure this out, and it's evidence of what we are. So like, comment, share, and subscribe, and please go to those YouTube channels that I mentioned and subscribe to them. Um, it's very important, and like the video, it's very important to do that for them. I would really like, he has 104,000 views with 3.8 thousand subscribers. Come on, I subscribed. We've got to subscribe to this and like his video so that it gets out there, and that maybe, that could be the part you do. That maybe, just maybe, after the rapture occurs, that his video will wind up, and it's an amazing video, I mean, it's, it's very clear, that it will wind up in the hands of a tribulation saint who is on the fence of knowing what's going on, and that they don't accept the mark, and that they do kneel down and accept the Lord, uh, his free gift, his free gift, you know, and that's it. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. Not about these dates. It's about the journey to the other side as we continue looking at these high watch days. It's not about the date. Don't think it's about these dates. It is about the learning that we do as we search for these dates. So anyway, excuse me, Repo Man 64, if I find anything, I thought that was pretty staggering. I was like, second Passover, but why isn't there an event three days after it, just like there is on first Passover? And then I found it 182 days earlier from uh, from the flood is exactly three days after second Passover. I was like, what? <laughs> so when I find something like that, if something like, and it's God still, the Holy Spirit still re revealing things. So as those kind of things get revealed to me, I will bring them here and reveal them to you or God will. And uh, for those who uh, are really watching, we'll watch together. Repo Man 64, we'll chat with you again later.